Today I want to talk to you about the importance of doing good in your community. In fact, that's going to be the topic that we cover this week. And I'm going to share a story with you about a guy I grew up with named John Yadisernia, who to this day is one of the best people I've ever known, played a significant role in my childhood, and also played a role in one of the first times I can remember being part of something that was just kind of good for the community, good for someone else in the community and made a difference in my life. So welcome back to the AHA Moments where every day I share the lessons I've learned in my work as a psychotherapist and in my life to inspire you to live your very best life. Of course, I'm your host, Elliot Connie, and let me tell you about John. John was my younger brother's best friend growing up, but he was such a good guy. And my childhood, my home life was so rattled that he would do like really, really cool things. Like he and his dad would go fishing, camping, just like really, really cool things. And he would invite my brother and then let me come along too. I was just a couple years older than him and it was just a lot of fun. And one day John moved to this apartment and there was a pool at the apartment and we were in the pool swimming, me, John, and my younger brother. And we're swimming in this pool and this kid that none of us knew ran into the pool area and then jumped into the deep end of the pool. Now John noticed first that this young kid was struggling and he swam over and began to pull this young boy out of the water who at this point had been, he was nearly unconscious. Myself and my younger brother helped John pull this young boy out of the water and John being someone that was kind of an outdoors kid, his dad had taken him on all kinds of adventures and all kinds of stuff. He knew first aid, he knew CPR, and he began to give this young boy CPR and saved his life. It was a remarkable thing. They made a news story about John and he was in the newspaper and they gave him, I don't remember what it was, like a $5,000 scholarship. I was probably like 11, John was probably like 10, my younger brother was probably like nine. It was somewhere in that ballpark if I had to guess. But I remember how good it felt to do something nice for someone else. I remember how good it felt. And to be honest with you, my younger brother and I didn't get any recognition. John got all of the headlines and all the kudos, and I don't have any feelings about that. I just felt good to be a part of it. And by the way, John deserved all the kudos. Like He did the CPR, he saw it first, all that stuff. It was probably my first experience of just like doing something good without any thoughts or desires of anything being reciprocated. And I'm sure John didn't do it because he thought he would get any accolades or anything reciprocated. He just did it because he saw a kid struggling and he wanted to help him. So we helped him. You know, it was really that simple for John. Like this one kid was struggling. I'm going to go over there and help him. I'm going to help him. I remember the, the mother's gratitude to all three of us that day at the pool. And I think about that sometimes as my first experience of like just doing good for someone else can have an impact on you. I have a really close friend named Chris Iveson who says, life is like a big fan. What you throw at the fan will splash back on you. So don't throw poop at the fan. And it's an impactful way to look at things for me because the quickest pathway towards happiness and joy is to be a giver of happiness and joy, is to do good things for other people and other people in your community. I think very often when we think about positive things, we spend a lot of our time thinking about being a recipient of positive things. But I want you to spend more of your time thinking about being the giver of positive things and know that it will come back upon you in ways and in quantities that you could not imagine. So can I invite you guys to think of the first time you remember learning how important it was to do good things for other people. I want you to to think about when was the first time you learned that lesson? Because I think it's an important thing to reflect on. It's an an important lesson to, to keep with us. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the AHA Moments. Please continue to share this podcast on your social media platforms with at least one person that you think could benefit from hearing this message today. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already. You can do that on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Simplecast, wherever it is you enjoy listening to your podcast. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. When it comes to doing good in the world, 
I think about a Jackie Robinson quote that says, our purpose for being here is to do good things and leave this world better than we found it. I met someone early in my life that inspired me to truly understand that quote that impacts my life to this day. And that's what I'm going to be sharing today on this podcast. So welcome back to the aha moments where every day I share the lessons I've learned in my work as a psychotherapist and in my life to inspire you to live your very best life. Of course, I'm your host, Elliot Connie, and I want to talk to you about a source of inspiration that will probably be surprising. A lot of times we think about sources of inspiration as like a church leader or a coach you met, you got coached by at some point, or some admirable figure for some prominent reason. But one of the people that inspired me was my high school janitor, a guy named Jeremiah. We nicknamed him Maya. And as knucklehead, misbehaving, bad teenagers, for four years of high school, my friends and I tortured Jeremiah. We picked on him in a way that I'm kind of embarrassed to admit to this day. We would pick on him because, you know, he was a janitor and we looked down on him as a janitor. Like, what kind of life do you have as a janitor? And we're better than you because we're not janitors, even though we were just high school kids. And over those four years, I noticed I never saw Jeremiah not smile. And we'd, you know, throw jabs at him and he would throw them back at us. He was always respectful and kind and gentle but I never saw him not smiling. He had this like super duper wide broom that he would be like sweeping the floor with. He would be walking down the hall in the school and his broom was so wide, it went the entire width of the hallway. And I can close my eyes now and see Jeremiah kind of pushing that broom, whistling. And that's the only way I ever saw Jeremiah with that kind of lighthearted look, kind of whistling as he does these walks and smiling as he does it. And one day late in high school, I'm about to graduate, I asked him, I said, Jeremiah, for four years, I mean, we picked on you, but I never have seen you not smile. How do you do this? Like, how do you have this life where you're just smiling all the time? He said, you know, Elliot, I've made some really bad decisions in my life. And he talked about getting sober, talked about his journey with alcohol. And he said that one of the things that he needed to learn how to do was to not be so selfish. So he was thinking about like, what do I do to not be so selfish? And he decided to volunteer at the school to help clean it up. And he said, because I wanted to give kids the gift of coming to a clean school every day. So he volunteered in his first year of sobriety to come to the school and clean it so that everyone could go to a clean school. And he said he realized that it felt so good to give back to the community and make sure the students at Franklin High School could attend a clean school that he begged them to hire him the second year because he knew he wanted to feel good going forward and he wanted to give the gift of a clean school to the next generation and he worked as a janitor. At that time, he was a conversation with me. He'd been doing it about 20 years. And I remember coming away from that conversation thinking, I want to be like that. I want to work for grander purposes than just money. I want to make a difference in this world. And I understood in that moment the power of unselfishness. I understood in that moment the power of putting other people's needs before your own. It gave him the power and ability to stay sober. At that time, he'd been sober for about 20 years. And he credits this job with keeping him sober. And I thought about that. I, th I mean, because there's nothing, I mean, that is a significant accomplishment. And cleaning a high school in such an unselfish way helped him to do it. And I think about that to this very day. When you do good for other people, it comes back in immeasurable ways onto you. That's what I want you to think about today. So I want you to think about like, what can you do in your community to make your community a better place? And I don't want you to do that so that you will get these rewards. I just want you to do it knowing that you will get these rewards because that's truly 
how to be unselfish and make a difference in our society. And if our society had more Jeremiah's in it, I don't think we'd be in the crazy situation that we're in. Love you guys. Thank you so much for listening and supporting this podcast. Please continue to share this on your social media platforms or with at least one person that you think could benefit from hearing this message today. And don't forget to subscribe wherever it is you enjoy listening to your podcast, whether it's Apple, Spotify, Simplecast, Google, wherever you like listening to podcasts. And don't forget also to support this podcast on Patreon, where there's bonus material every single week just for my Patreon subscribers. Thank you again, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Your brain is a funny thing and will often dictate what behaviors are rewarding, what behaviors get repeated, and what behaviors make a difference for us. And today I'm gonna talk about what happens to your brain when you do nice things for other people. And I'm gonna give you a couple of examples to demonstrate the power of doing nice things for other people and how it impacts your brain and your body chemistry and makes you feel good. So welcome back to the AHA Moments where every day I share the lessons I've learned in my work as a psychotherapist and in my life to inspire you to live your very best life. Of course, I'm your host, Elliot Connie, and I wanna share something with you about the impact of doing good things. You know, you actually, you may not know it, but your brain likes seeing and being a part of happiness. And I remember when the pandemic happened back in spring of 2020, and I, just like everybody else, was stuck at home and didn't have anywhere to go and anything to do, and really was in a bit of a rut and psychologically started feeling bad. So I started thinking like, how can I make myself feel better? How can I do something that makes a difference in my psyche? Now, knowing what I know about the brain, I know one of the things, in fact, the best way to experience a positive impact on yourself is to give a positive impact to other people because your brain likes to see, experience, and feel happiness. So I went to this pizza shop And this was my first clue that this was going to make a difference. I went to this pizza shop, a local pizza shop near my house, and I ordered 10 pizzas. Cost like 150 bucks. I ordered 10 pizzas. And the guy asked, what are you going to do with these pizzas? And I explained to him, you know, you guys remember back when the pandemic first happened, there was all these like commercials about nurses and doctors and all the people on the front line of the pandemic and justifiably so. But some of the people that I admired a lot were the cashiers at the grocery store because just about everything was closed except food places. And these cashiers were usually like, you know, 20 year old kids or, you know, people just showing up. They're not making a ton of money and they were getting no credit. And I thought, I'm gonna go to the local grocery store, the one that I actually shop in, and I'm gonna give them pizza. I told that to the pizza shop owner, and he literally got emotional. He said, man, that is such a nice thing to do. And it made me feel good to see that response in him. It literally releases endorphins in my body to be around other people. You guys ever notice that when you're around happy people, it just feels good to be around those kind of people and that energy? Well, that's what happened. So I went to the store with the 10 pizzas and I walked up to the manager And I explained just what I just said. Look, everybody is supporting nurses and social workers and doctors and all the people working on the front line of the pandemic and justifiably so. But I want you guys to know that I notice you have to come to work every day and you're just as much on the front line with this pandemic as anybody else because we don't know who's coming into this store with COVID and these, you know, college age kids and elderly people working the cash register are just as much risk. So I want to buy everybody lunch. The manager was so moved and everyone came up to me and thanked me. To this day, when I go to that grocery store, people point me out and they wave and they say hi. I mean, that was two years ago and they still remember the impact of this. The thing that I want most people to know is if you want good things to happen for you, the easiest way to do that is to make good things happen to other people. There's this law of the world called reciprocity. And that is when I do good things for others, they naturally do good things for me. Even if it's letting me see their smile, their tone of voice, giving me a hug, letting me know how much I touch them. 
It literally makes my life better and impacts my brain chemistry. It impacts my body functionality because it changes how I experience what's going on around me. It changes the endorphins that my brains release and it makes me feel good. So if you want to feel good, if you want to, if you want to like feel happy, then do things for the people around you to make them feel happy too. It'll make the biggest difference in their life and in your life. So thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for sharing this podcast on your social media platforms or with at least one person that you think could benefit from hearing this message today. And don't forget to subscribe. You can do that wherever it is you enjoy listening to your podcast. Apple, Google, Simplecast, Spotify, wherever that is. And don't forget to support the podcast on Patreon because you get extra bonus material every week once you do that. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Making a positive difference in this world needs to be a consistent commitment. And today I'm going to talk to you about how I follow through on that commitment and how it has led to me getting into significant amounts of trouble in my professional field. Welcome back to the AHA Moments, where every day I share the lessons I've learned in my work as a psychotherapist and in my life to inspire you to live your very best life. Of course, I'm your host, Elliot Connie, and we're going to get into it today. When I was going to graduate school, so let me take you all the way back to the beginning of my journey. I got a bachelor's degree in psychology. I didn't really know what I was going to do with it. But after getting that bachelor's degree, I decided I wanted to live my life in service. And I thought about how to do that. I considered going into clergy, actually. I considered becoming a police officer, but it was very important to me to live my life in service. I had a a reasonably difficult childhood and wanted to be able to help people overcome the challenges that they faced in their lives. That was important to me. That was like a mission of mine. That was something that mattered a great deal to me. I eventually decided to become a psychotherapist. So I go to graduate school and I become a psychotherapist and I discovered this type of therapy called Solution Focused Brief Therapy and it it just spoke to me. It was the kind of work I wanted to do and the way I wanted to do it. It just spoke to me. So I jump into this field and I start noticing that a lot of the trainings that were happening in this field were either A, far away, like you had to go to Europe, Singapore. They were hard to access and not everybody can afford a flight to Europe. Not everybody can afford a flight to Asia. Like these are difficult things. So that's A and B, they were very expensive. Like you would find session tapes to get trained in this type of therapy that costs hundreds and hundreds of dollars. And and that's a barrier to access the information. So I didn't know that I would one day be a leading voice in this field. I just thought if I'm ever in a position to make a difference in this field, I want to make training material more accessible. I want to make training material more accessible to everyone in this field. So I started doing free trainings. Like that's my way of giving back is doing as many free trainings as I possibly can. These days through my training organization, we do somewhere around four to five free training events every single month. And here's the thing. I stupidly thought that people in this field would be excited. Like this, someone is doing free training and someone's making training accessible. I thought people would be super excited about that. I thought people would be super on board with that. And the audience was like the people who wanted to learn how to do this approach were super thrilled and super excited and super on board and super ready to do it. But the, 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 like my colleagues and peers, like the other people in the field were upset by it. Like the other people in the field were really bothered that someone was doing training like this. I have gotten some of the rudest, meanest emails simply because I'm doing for free what they're trying to charge a lot of money from. I've even had death threats. Believe it or not, I have had death threats. I've received anonymous letters in the mail. I have received horrible emails in my inbox from people sending it from like fake accounts. I've been attacked on social media. And I say all of that to say, do good anyway. Like one of my favorite poems is a poem called Anyway, and it was written by Mother Teresa, and it's called Anyway. And in spite of challenges, struggles, 
difficulties and setbacks, I've decided I'm going to keep doing good anyway. And it makes me feel good that there are people learning how to do solution-focused brief therapy at a higher level, learning how to be more confident with this approach at a higher level and helping more clients and money is not a barrier to them. Like that makes me so excited and makes me feel so fulfilled. I got into this field to make a difference. I didn't get into this field to get rich. I didn't get into this field to get famous. I got into this field to make a difference. And my way of giving back is to give information to the people who need it, the people who can't afford it, the people who live in developing nations, the people who typically have a hard time accessing quality training material. I want their clients to benefit too. So that's my way of being committed to my desire to give back and be fulfilled. And I wonder what your way is too. So I, I want you to think about what do you do to give back? What do you do to make yourself proud? What do you do to make the people who have invested in you proud? What do you do to make a difference in this world? Just sit and think about it for a second because I bet you do things that you often don't give yourself credit for. Thank you so much. I love you guys so much. Thank you for being here. Thank you for taking the time to listen to this podcast. Please continue to share this podcast and help us grow this audience. You can do that on your social media platforms with at least one person that you think could benefit from hearing this message today. And don't forget to subscribe. You can do that on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Simplecast, Spotify, wherever it is you enjoy listening to podcasts. And don't forget to support this podcast on Patreon, where there is weekly bonus material available just for the Patreon followers. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. There's a moment from pop culture that is maybe my favorite example of doing something good for someone else without any expectation of something in return and that good having a significant ripple effect throughout multiple lives and in this case actually the world. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So welcome back to the AHA Moments, where every day I share the lessons I've learned in my work as a psychotherapist and in my life to inspire you to live your very best life. I'm your host, Elliot Connie, and today I want to talk to you about Chadwick Boseman. Chadwick Boseman was one of my favorite actors. He became iconically famous from playing the Black Panther in the Marvel Universe. But I first learned about him in a movie about Jackie Robinson. I think the movie's called 42. But he played Jackie Robinson in this movie. And interestingly enough, before I tell you what Chadwick Boseman's connection is to my favorite example of doing good for other people, I want to tell you how I met him. I met Chadwick Boseman the week before the Black Panther came out. I was in London. I was in Heathrow Airport flying home. And I was in the Delta Sky Lounge having breakfast. And this man with two women next to him that looked like they were for him, starts walking towards me. And I immediately recognize him, but I can't think of where I know him from. And then it dawned on me, he played Jackie Robinson on 42. Because again, this was before Black Panther had come out. It was after the Black Panther had appeared in other Marvel movies, but it was before the movie specifically about the Black Panther had come out. And I'm sitting in the Delta Sky Lounge and I realize that's him and... I'm not going to say anything to him because I don't want to draw attention to him. But then they call, like the over the intercom, they call my flight. He gets up and we end up walking down the tarmac together. We were going down, we were going on different flights, but walking down the terminal at the same time. And then it's just, it's like me and him. These women that work for him, I assume work for him, walked further ahead. And then it's just me and him on this like motorized walkway. And I said, are you Chadwick Boseman? And he said, no. Nah. And I said, I think you are. And man, I just want to say good luck on this upcoming movie. And he said, thanks, man. And he gave me a hug. I said, I don't want an autograph or anything. I just want to say good luck. He gave me a hug and he walked away. And I snuck a picture as he walked away. That's how I met Chadwick Boseman. But what's really interesting is how he became an actor. Because Chadwick Boseman went to an, like an elite acting class in Oxford, UK, and he could not afford to go to this elite acting class, and he got a scholarship that was paid for by Denzel Washington. 
Now, Denzel Washington had just put up the money for some kids who were interested in becoming actors so they could afford to attend this elite acting class. Denzel Washington had no idea that he was going to be funding the future Black Panther, Jackie Robinson, Thurgood Marshall. Like, these are the roles that Chadwick Boseman went on to play. Denzel Washington had no idea that he was doing that. Denzel Washington was just, because of his love of acting, was paying it forward so that a future generation could also love acting and become engaged in elite training and education in the field of acting. And it just so happened that one of these actors, one of these future actors, one of these future attendees, became a famous actor. And Chadwick Boseman got to thank Denzel Washington while accepting an award at an award show. And I watched that and I thought, what a moment that must be for Chadwick Boseman to say thank you to Denzel Washington. And what a moment it must be for Denzel Washington to see evidence of his investment in such a profound and prominent way. See, when you do good, you just never know how it's going to come back. But I can guarantee you it's going to come back. Just do good and watch it, send it out into the world, and watch it come back however it came back. For Denzel Washington, that investment came back by millions upon millions of people being entertained and even inspired by Chadwick Boseman. That's the brilliance of doing good, is once you do it and you throw it out into the world, you have no idea how it's going to come back but it is gonna ripple, it is gonna come back. But that's not why I want you to do it. I want you to do it so that the more good you throw out in the world, the more it ripples. Who cares if it comes back? Just know you've thrown good into the world and that makes a difference in and of itself. That's what doing good is about. That's what the manifestation of this goodness is about. And that's why when I heard that story and I saw that, it just made me feel good. And it was just an amazing thing to hear and has become my favorite example of doing good in like the pop world. So I want you to think about a time that you've witnessed good happening. What did you see? And what can you learn from what you saw? Thank you so much for being here. And I just wanna say a special shout out. I I talked to one of my best friends in the world. His name is Matthew. I literally, I met this dude when I was 19. We are still close friends today. And I talked to him the other day and I told him I was under the weather. He said, yeah, I noticed in your podcast, about a month ago, your voice was cracky, but it sounds like you're doing better now. And I was super touched that this dude listens to my podcast every day, and that's my guy. So I want to thank all of you, man, for taking... I want to thank you, Matthew, for taking the time to listen to my podcast. I want to thank all of you out there for listening to this podcast. Please share it on your social media platforms with at least one person that you think would benefit from hearing this message today. And please subscribe. You can do that on Apple Podcasts, Simplecast. Spotify, Google, wherever it is you love listening to your podcast. And don't forget to support the podcast on Patreon where there's bonus material every week. And I cannot wait to see you on Monday. Love y'all.